Hello, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the uh, European markets uh, on Tuesday, the 21st of June 2016. I, I look at my clock then just to make sure what day and time it was. Okay, so yes, uh, certainly looking at the uh, US markets and uh, seeing, uh, to, trying to see what the uh, current uh, status quo is in terms of the, uh, well, post the uh, sell off uh, late last uh, night. Okay, now in terms of. Uh, uh, the trade signal app, make sure you uh, download it uh, from the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Signals and market updates from leading providers. And you can do that at www.tradesignal.com or obviously the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now in terms of market um, bias at present, European markets certainly continuing with the uh, short squeeze bounce with regards to uh, <clears throat> the uh, Brexit concerns and the Remain vote, etc. Okay, certainly continues and uh, totally oblivious to risk at present uh, with the Kiwi and the uh, the Aussie certainly uh, are skyrocketing higher at the moment. Okay, so certainly impressive move on the Aussie and the uh, and the Kiwi at present uh, and certainly needs to be respected as well to a large degree. Okay, now in terms of US markets, let's see exactly where we stand now. First of all, Asian markets overnight, Nikkei higher. Okay, USD JPY at 104.5. Uh, bounced off that 103 level, 103.5. Nikkei up by 1.2%, uh, Hang Seng up 0.7%, but the Shanghai weak, that's my major cause for concern, okay, folks? That, the fact that the Shanghai is weak, that's not a good sign, okay? Uh, and certainly is early alarm bells ringing. Also, with regards to Brexit concerns, obviously going into Thursday, uh, as we uh, uh, approach closer to the vote, the higher the probability that the market will sell off, and the higher the probability the market will, will, will be vulnerable to a sell-off, okay? So again, Take that on board as well. In terms of uh, bearish news, we had uh, Caterpillar news, but was certainly bearish yesterday. Os Osborne talking about suspension of uh, uh, the uh, stock market going into Thursday. A Soros warning with regards to a 20% decline if uh, if the leaf vote obviously gains ground. Uh, but we know Mr. Soros' agenda, given the fact that he's already heavily short as it is, and he's probably uh, negative on that. German OMT decision as well. Uh, really, that's not helping the euro. That's one of the reasons why I bought the euro today. We did have stronger economic data out of Germany, ZEW, and the EU, ZEW, UK, CBI, certainly coming in better than expected as well to a large degree. And that was supposed to help the, uh, that was technically supposed to help the market, uh, or help the euro certainly move higher, but that hasn't been the case, okay? Uh, Bundesbank hawkish, German inflation stronger as well, that's supposed to help the euro, certainly isn't at present, okay? Uh, and German exports are expected to be uh, down. But the ZW certainly has uh, uh, dispelled that myth, okay, and that's uh, philosophy and thought process. Okay, so in terms of US markets, let's look at the market in terms of uh, uh, future uh, data. We have the um, CBI data, oh, that's already out, sorry, a red book uh, is out in uh, 29 minutes, okay, that will uh, obviously dictate. Then we have uh, Miss Yellen on board, we have Mr. Draghi on board as well at 2 o'clock in the next half an hour. Then we have um, Mr. Powell speaking as well, and then we have API a weekly crude, okay, data. So all that certainly is to come, and that will obviously dictate the uh, the actual uh, market uh, price action as well. Okay, now in terms of the uh, the actual uh, technical setup, let's look at the Nasdaq first of all. So Nasdaq, as you can see here, late flush into the uh, market close. Uh, now currently we're currently around the four four twenty zone, okay. So obviously we have gap fill, two gaps to potentially fill below. Okay, given the fact that the US market sold off, uh, certainly is a, a concern. Okay, now having said that, uh, the daily chart at the moment still has uh, an unfilled gap to close at uh, 4.355 and uh, 4.315. So those are the two zones that you'll be looking at and focusing upon. Okay, a 60 minute chart at the moment, you do have the potential for an inverted head and shoulders formation. But having said that, the weakness yesterday was a cause for concern. But the European markets certainly have brushed that aside and certainly are trading higher. It really is, uh, it depends on which way you want to uh, move in terms of the fence, especially with regards to Miss Yellen being hawkish. Mr. Draghi expected to be hawkish. The bias would certainly be on the downside. And a lot of the move has already been factored in with the, uh, the Nasdaq obviously gapping higher by 20 points. Okay. So uh, again, certainly take that into consideration. So again, I'm open to either position. Uh, if I get started, I'm currently short, so I'm certainly talking my book at present. But if I get stopped out, then I'll have to obviously reassess the situation and then obviously take a trade in the opposite direction, okay? So again, looking for uh, this pattern and obviously may, 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 making myself aware of that pattern. Again, you have gap fill at 4400 and you have gap fill at 4375 for those sold those to a certainty a possibility. In terms of cross-referencing the uh, market, so if you look at the semiconductors, you're a topping tail. 
on the daily chart. So again, that's a negative sign for the Nasdaq. Okay, so those of you that are um, looking at the Nasdaq, that again is a negative sign. A topping tail is not a good sign on the semicons, and therefore you're looking for a move lower. Okay, on the Nasdaq. Let's have a look at the um, the biotechs. Biotechs still remain weak, not showing any signs of uh, of growth or reversal yet, and you are looking to potentially test the lows again. Okay, so Nasdaq doesn't exactly look very healthy at this juncture. Okay. Now, in terms of the S&P 500, let's bring up the S&P 500. Again, you can see the weakness in towards the close yesterday. Again, going into this potential Brexit uncertainty vote, etc. It isn't a good sign. Weekly chart of the, of the S&P 500, you can clearly see we're into resistance, that 2104 level, and certainly remains weak. Okay. Daily chart at the moment, uh, again, you have a topping tail yesterday. That's not a good sign, folks. Any pop higher, again, will more than likely be faded. OK, so to certainly take that on board and uh, certainly indicating weakness. OK, in terms of the 60 minute chart. OK, you have the bearish engulfing candle here. OK, so the bull flag certainly has failed. I was expecting the inverted head and shoulders formation to carry on, carry on uh, playing out up to this uh, 2110. That obviously hasn't materialized. OK, the market certainly is uh, is uh, is moving lower. OK, it looks like it wants to close the gap before it attempts to say uh, IHS or the IHS totally fails altogether. OK, that certainly is a possibility as well. OK, uh, again, keep an eye on that. OK, in terms of price action, 10 minute chart of S&P 500. Again, you have that unfilled gap at 2071. That certainly seems like it wants to potentially target. OK, so again, remaining open minded and, uh, and understanding the possibility of a market certainly uh, moving in that direction. OK, righty then. OK, so in terms of the uh, Cross-referencing that with the uh, Russell. Let's bring up the Russell chart now. Russell chart ETF. Okay, Russell chart as you can see flush towards the close. Uh, again, certainly indicating weakness. Daily chart. The Russell at present, you can see you had a topping tail, uh, unfilled gap left above. You have uh, unfilled gap below, so therefore looking to close. So even if you pop high, you're into gap fill resistance, and therefore you're looking for weakness. Okay, and looking for the markets to move low. Okay, so certainly take that on board. Looking at a 60 minute chart, again, looking at weakness, uh, given the fact that you have an unfilled gap below that we're looking to potentially close and even potentially move lower. Again, Brexit concerns, uncertainty, etc., etc. Everything is indicating low. That's my understanding at present. Okay. So, Russell week, SP 500 week. Let's look at the Dow Jones. Now, the Caterpillar earnings, obviously, Caterpillar sales yesterday update, certainly bearish. Okay. Certainly uh, having a negative effect to a large extent. Okay. So, bring up the daily chart at the moment. You can clearly see the. Uh, the Dow uh, are putting in a topping tail and near the gap filled resistance. Okay, so certainly weak. 60 minute chart, uh, the inverted head and shoulders formation more or less has hit its target, and you can cl clearly see this flush towards the close. So that's not exactly a positive sign, especially with US markets so weak. Okay, so certainly take that on board as well. Okay, in terms of um, price action on the Dow, you can clearly see that we certainly have weakness. Looking at the Dow transports, again, you're into gap filled resistance, unfilled gap below certainly weak okay so both dow uh, and nasdaq s p all indicating low let's look at the financial sector financial sector at the moment uh, you certainly are in this potential downtrend you do have gap filled below though so certainly bear that in mind now given the uh, brexit vote and the uncertainty regarding that banks still obviously will be under pressure okay also with regards to boj as well certainly a lot of uncertainty so uncertainty all around okay Uncertainty, fear, the unknown, Brexit vote two days away, not a good sign, okay? In terms of retail on the S&P, you, you held gap fill resistance. We started to reverse quite powerfully, and you have unfilled gap below to certainly close, and then we have support down here. So certainly uh, resistance on the retail sector as well, okay? Uh, in terms of S&P, metals and mining, again, metals and mining, certainly indicating resistance at gap fill. So certainly looking for weakness there as well, looking to potentially move lower and you're into that horizontal resistance. So basically it's telling me <clears throat> that uh, US markets are certainly moving lower. That's my summation. OK, and that's my expectation. OK, folks, I think that's a market wrap for now. Be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs and take advantage of that 25% cash bonus offer. Goodbye.